One of the worst things is when you try telling something to your mom, and then she loses her temper and refuses to listen to you any longer. Actually, I have wonderful parents, but soon you will get what I'm talking about. I... 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 When people talk to me, they guess by the sounds that I could articulate. They usually expect to hear simple words, such as to give, to eat, to drink, or take a poo. But they do not expect to hear poetry. It is very difficult to understand a person with a communication disorder who treacherously starts to recite Walt Whitman or speak other languages. People sometimes feel uneasy when I try to say something unexpected, unpredictable, some complex words, and even more so if I play with meaning. That is why I get to speak simple and short, so that people like me Speech Synthesizer makes things a bit easier. I get invited to speak in different places precisely because there is a speech synthesizer. It is exotic and fashionable. Sometimes people think that I made it myself. Nope. I just wrote a convenient interface. As you may have noticed, there is something wrong with me. I will not torture you any longer. I have adetoid, hyperkinetic, cerebral palsy, dysorthria, and a shaved skull. I don't know which one confuses you most. I will talk today about the importance of being able to communicate. This may seem trivial, but it seems to me that I know something about this that people usually don't think about. Take habits. For example, they make up most of our daily lives. I call a habit a set of actions that work automatically, do not require us to think too much. For example, when I go to the kitchen, I automatically turn on the light. I don't think about it and, you can say, I don't notice it. And all because turning on the light is not difficult. Even to me. In winter, I moved from my parents to a rented apartment. I started an independent life, I guess. I had additional reasons to move around the city and I began to use public transport, buses, trolleybuses and minibuses. For me these trips were free of charge. At some point, I realized that instead of a tram I could ride my electric carriage, and this made the trip easier. I can go wherever I want. I'm not afraid that I will get tired of walking. I'm not afraid to miss the last tram. I also have a recumbent tricycle. A kind man named Constantine allowed me to park the trike in the parking lot near my house. He screwed an anchor into the wall so that I can attach my trike to it. However, we made a small mistake at the design stage and I had to bend every time I wanted to get the trike to go for a walk. I got used to the idea that walking is difficult, because it was a lengthy and backbreaking thing to detach the trike. One fine day Costi screwed the anchor 8 inches farther into the wall. Now I get my trike in 30 seconds. I'm used to the fact that now it's easy. It turns out that a technical tool, like an electric carriage or a small change in the design of the environment, like a convenient place for a hook, allows you to radically change the world of a person who has extra difficulties in doing ordinary things. Such changes form new habits and automatisms, and it becomes easy for a person with developmental disabilities to move around, cook, read or communicate. Ordinary interactions are largely based on these ready-made habits and templates.
More often than not, life circumstances do not require us to give detailed descriptions. Like when a shop assistant asks whether you need a plastic bag at the supermarket. In this case you just not in response. In messengers, we often use stickers that express emotions or attitudes. Functionally, it is something like a grimace or a gesture. Sometimes understanding is reached with an indicative gesture only. All this proves that communication is not based only on words. To show love, affection, words are not efficient, it takes something else. For example, on Valentine's Day, you can get off with just words. Sometimes, if you have a difficulty speaking out words, then your gestures, postures and facial expressions also run the risk of getting in the wrong place and communicating the wrong thing. It's inconvenient to live completely without words. By the way, make an experiment. Keep doing regular things that you do during the day, without saying a word. Today, there are many alternative means of communication for those who find it difficult to speak with their mouth. Such tools can be quite simple, like gestures and cards. There are also complex programs that, by pressing a few buttons, can immediately voice out a long sentence. This program can take into account the time of the day and degree of intimacy with the person you are talking to. Which of these programs do I use? First, it's the middle finger, a universal gesture understood by all audiences. Speaking seriously, it's facial expressions and gestures that help us express basic human needs. Second, this is a program that I've developed myself. Communication with this app occurs in two modalities. It can either vocalize a written text, or show the black screen where I type in white capital letters. So my interlocutor immediately reads and makes guesses about what I want to say. Third, I am currently working on a system that will give me a chance to select all phrases using a cheap keyboard. I want to rely specifically on a small portable keyboard because you can safely drop it, drool on it, hold it either side. My phrases are divided into groups. Each group is assigned a button and has several ready-made statements. That is, to say hello, I press the G button, and then I press the 1 button, and the machine says, hello, or says, how are you doing? if my caps lock is off. There is also an option for a random selection of phrases in each category. That is, I can choose the category complements by pressing the letter L, and then press tab. This way, the system will choose a random complement. So far, there are around 60 ready-made statements in the system. You may ask, why so few? You know, it's just hard to sit down and guess what universal statements you will need in different situations. I took English-Russian phrase books as the basis for the program. However, Elichka the cannibal from Ilf and Petrovies, the twelve chairs managed to communicate with a rather limited set of statements. The simplicity with which you can compliment or swear by pressing two buttons opens up new possibilities but also requires new skills. You can just start talking out of the blue. You need to learn how to capture moments in which it's appropriate to take the turn. This also requires a certain habit. Ordinary people don't notice how they take turns, but I need to put extra efforts into it. I now work as an assistant to speech pathologist at a rehabilitation center in St. Petersburg. I help in what alternative communication is concerned, since it is important both to restore speech and give the person a chance to communicate here and now. These tasks divide the lesson in two parts. My part of the lesson looks like a counseling session. Setting up programs takes only five minutes. 
and then I just help the person to integrate this communication tool into their life and create a new habit. The habit of not only listening to the world, but participating in it. I once studied at a special school for children with musculoskeletal disorders. I had a great relationship with the school bus driver. We smiled at each other. Each time when I met him during the school day, I told him whether I would take the bus in the evening. He understood me well, since this was the only thing I could say. In order to enjoy each other's company, this was enough. It's quite a complete human relationship, for which a minimal bit of information is sufficient. If you try to analyze all the dialogues that you have during day, it turns out that a significant part of them conveys very little information. Much of their content becomes clear from the context. But when I got a speech synthesizer, we started talking between lessons on a variety of topics. This opened us up to each other in a completely different way, as people who have their own interests, opinions, and ability to reason. This is fundamentally different from the dialogue at a supermarket checkout or from how a person communicates with his dog who greets him when he gets home. A speech synthesizer allows its owner to reveal oneself to the world. One girl named Olisaya had cerebral palsy and speech problems. Once she started using a speech synthesizer, she managed to find a job as a radio host. Now she chairs a popular science program once a week, and the entire text is read by a speech synthesizer. In this story, I feel the spirit of the future. The future in which it won't matter whether or not you can speak with your mouth. But rather the content you want to share with others. Since more and more people with developmental disabilities become independent, they have to deal with solving practical tasks with the help of other people. But in order to get this help, sometimes you need to try real hard. For example, I can put on gloves. I am from St. Petersburg. It's quite cold there and my hands get very cold on my three keys handlebars. I thought to myself, it doesn't matter, people will help me out. In the end, every person should once in a lifetime try to pull gloves on a person with cerebral palsy. After 10 minutes of asking other people on the street, I was still with my hands naked, but received a cigarette and 100 rubles from strangers, as well as a call which reported my behavior to the police. Finally, there was a young woman with a child who realized what was happening and was able to help. After this incident, I included a street mode to my mobile app. Now the tablet shows written text in big letters. Thanks to this, I can let others on the street read my requests. It's so simple, but it greatly affects my quality of life. Of course, using alternative means of communication, such as a tablet with a special program for composing and voicing text, requires some effort. As a rule, it's much more convenient for me to mumble something before reaching out to my laptop or tablet. I try to talk all the time, but my spoken language requires too much work from my interlocutors. Only my close relatives and friends are used to my speech, can understand me, and even them not always. Therefore, I have to turn to alternative means of communication. There is another problem. If you find it difficult to do something, there are always caring relatives who take it upon themselves. If you cannot hold a cup of coffee without spilling it, they will help you out and hold it for you. This way you get used to them doing things for you. And you get used to doing nothing, because it is always easier to ask someone else, and not do it yourself. The most amazing thing is that the speech is not an exception. 
parents who speak for their children. This is the most common thing. A one-year-old child does not yet speak in words, but the grandmother feeds him porridge and says, Say, what a tasty porridge your grandmother prepared. Give me, dear grandmother, another spoon. An ordinary child learns independent speech over time. Although they often repeat opinions of their parents and try to meet their expectations, at some point they learn to contradict, express conflicting views which reflect their own thoughts and feelings. At the same time, a person who has difficulties with oral speech always remains a child in whose mouth their grandma puts whatever she'd like to hear from the baby. While you are still moving or picking up the beginning of a phrase, others have already guessed your thoughts, what you wanted to say, and are responding to this made-up utterance. You have no way to show that it was not your initial statement. This kind of censorship sometimes looks paradoxical. I happen to participate in events for people with disabilities, which look like a club of talking moms and children quietly sitting next to them. Just because mothers cannot afford giving the floor to their children. After all, it would take too much effort, time and attention to hear what a person with developmental impairments really would like to say. Ordinary communication proceeds at a different, faster pace. Technology at least partly allows to keep up with this pace. Partly, because so far there are no devices that can directly extract signals from the cerebral cortex. But even today's synthesizers teach users new habits. The ability to say what you want and when you want gives you freedom. It is something that people with ordinary speech take for granted, which they don't notice. Even if they think they are not free.